bear with me <laughs> warning everybody oh my god I, this isn't i don't understand hang on oh this is so annoying just wait for me sorry <laughs> why is it this way does it matter if it's this way round it's not locked on my screen where are we going right somebody help me what do i do it's not locked on my screen i've gone to the sorry i'm a bit thirsty <laughs> i don't know what else to do because i've unlocked it on my on my screen kiki oh god Oh, I can't do this. I know I'm the right way, but is it full screen? Hang on. Oh, this is so annoying. Um, I don't understand. I'm going to have to do it this way round, which I suppose won't be the end of the world, but I bet Mark will be frustrated with me. Let's say that. It's very weird because usually, oh God, oh, right, hang on, orientation is locked, rotate device back, well I am, oh God, right, just bear with me, <laughs> Mark is going to kill me, oh now I'm in this weird close up thing, oh God, that's awful. Oh no, I can't bear you looking at me like that. No, it's too close. <laughs> what is happening? Oh God, I'm going to have to put you miles away. Oh Jesus. Hang on a minute. Hang on. I've done something so strange that's made me be in full, full close up. I'm going to have to put you over there. Oh my God, what is that? Really sorry guys, bear with me. Really, really annoying. Um, I'm just gonna crack on because this is gonna be more boring than anything, listening to me moaning about which way I am up. Good morning, everybody. Now I can't see your messages because they're not going up. <laughs> it's going so well, isn't it, Dawny? How are you all? Oh, I don't know if Miss Mark when he's not here. You see how smooth he makes smooth he makes everything go, don't you? It without Mark, it's a shit show, really. Let's face it. I can't even get the um, messages on here, and I'm in this bizarre close up. Yes, <laughs> Russ, Mark, come back. All is forgiven. Exactly. I can't start again, Dawny. This is the hell of YouTube because then I won't have a link. <laughs> right, click on screen and click rotate. Thank you, somebody's speaking to me normally here. Somebody's genuinely happening me, helping me. No, that's not working. That's what I keep doing and it doesn't work, so I'm gonna let it go. Um, I can't switch it on and switch it off. I can't start again, Zoe, because I haven't got a link. You wouldn't believe how complicated all of this is. So you're right over there and I'm just gonna try and get through this. <laughs> Right, I'm going to have to start again because I literally can't do this. Bye, bye. Right. Is this the same link as before? Okay, we're, we're just going to do this like this. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to have to freestyle it. I'm going to have to try and read your messages on here. And I've got no references because I, I, I can't see anything down here. But anyway, <laughs> I can't wait for the conversation off the back of this with Mark later. Oh, my God. Right. Good morning. What a, what a, what a terribly, terribly sad, distressing weekend. Um, 
Oh, God, where does one start? I, I suppose the only way that I can talk about the situation that is currently raging in um, Israel and the Gaza is from just the point of view of all the innocents within this. How utterly terrifying for everybody. Um, you know, as much as, as this will have been a surprise to the um, Israelis, also to all the innocents in Gaza, who also won't have been informed about what was going to happen. Um, so Shoshana, I'm stuck in Israel. It's been so, so scary. I just want to get home. Oh, my God. You poor thing. I can imagine. Just horrific. Obviously, for those of you that don't know, my father is Jordanian, um, right, right on the border. My we have uh, family and uh, pal family and friends in both Palestine and, uh, and and Israel. And I only to right here, right now is not the time or the place. I think to talk about. Um, the horrors that have been going on for so long in that region, so long. Um, th that is, this is not the time, the place, and I, I and I am not the person for it. But what I will say is, I see an image of somebody distraught, crying, terrified in Israel. I see an image of someone crying, distraught, terrified in the Gaza and back and forth and back and forth. And that's what breaks my heart. Always there is the innocent people that are sick and tired and sick and tired of being the victims of other people's I pick my words so carefully, ways of dealing with rage. There's the rage from Hamas and the rage from Israel and bomb and bomb and back and forth and back and forth. And just as that poor person was saying there, I'm in Israel, I'm desperate to get out, I'm terrified. And her horrific. And the hostages taken, all of it is just beyond, beyond bearable. Um, but I do think also it's so important that we think of all those poor children, elderly, people with no choices also in Gaza being, being bombed. I mean, it's just horrific. The tragedies on all sides, you know, one minute my heart is breaking for the parents of those people at the festival, you know, and just, and then the next, my, my heart is breaking for... The people in Gaza who are standing there not knowing where to go and how to protect their children and how to soothe their children. And that as human beings, we have to just look at it all and go, this madness, this absolute madness. And, you know, and I feel so scared when I see random really random it feels like behavior from biden it's like why was that he was suddenly sending that shit and we don't know and i just think it's so fragile and i just i'm just so desperate this doesn't kick off war right across the region and i'm i'm just always i'm just scared for all the innocent innocence everywhere that time and time again have to We just forget how lucky we are, don't we? We forget we have so many choices. Um, you know, to, to if you think how terrified you can be when just suddenly a massively loud sound, I don't know, there might be a, a car that crashes or something outside your house and how you leap in terror. Imagine that terror relentlessly over and over again, that whole area. Ham, uh, you know, Hamas to Israel, Israel to uh, back to Gaza. And I'm just talking about 
I'm just talking about this, the latest events. I'm not going back, I'm just talking about right here, right now. We have to think about all people and not tar everyone with the same brush. You know, you know, it's, 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 you know, just, we have to just like take the hate out and just put ourselves in the positions of the innocents on both sides caught in the middle of this rage and yeah. Erin Bullimar, it's already a war and war never changes. It just propagates cycles of violence and revenge. It takes a lot of effort and compassion to break. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And I think when you have, when you have idiots, I'm sorry to say it, when you have idiots like, you know, Trump, you know, just clod hopping through really sensitive. That's why I will not get, I'm not going to get into the politics. These are incredibly sensitive situations. I've just always talk from the heart and from, from the devastation that families are feeling on both sides and the loss that families are feeling on both sides. And it, it just, it just literally, it just breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart. You know, when big men play, the innocent pay, that's my line. And that is going across, right across the world. There are so many situations, aren't there, that you think, what the hell? What the hell? Can this just not? Can we just not? It's so fragile. Yeah, so fragile out there. Um, imagine you've got nowhere to hide. Both sides. I'm always going to say, but nowhere to hide. You know, where do I put my child? How do I run fast enough that I'm not taken hostage? What, how do I know that it's not going to be my building that comes down on my head? That's that like the whole weekend. That's all that I've been just like lost in. Um, I've been dying to speak to my dad this weekend because he is so, so, so well informed on, you know, on the Middle East and, and, and you know, he will go back decades and, and, and tell me the most interesting things. But I am talking to him later and I can't wait. And, um, yeah. I will, we will talk again about this tomorrow, I'm sure, once I've spoken to my dad. But, um, yeah. Ah, and Faith Goodman. My Jewish, Israeli and Palestinian Muslim friends are both amazing families. So they say both sides, the Jewish ones have more freedom where they want to live than the Palestinian ones. Yes, and you know, that is a fact. That is a fact. That isn't being in any way inflammatory. That's just, you know, these things are facts. And, um, and you know, we can't, we can't run away from that. But as I say, I, I'm just going to stick with the feelings for all those that are suffering and the terror. You know, and the people and for the young men on both sides that have no choices, the young men that have no choices um, that will get caught up, caught up with Hamas, the young men that have no choices that have to go into the army in Israel. You know, years ago, I did a play on that very thing. It was actually written by an Israeli, an Israeli very sympathetic to the Palestinians. And it was a play all about how, you know, on both sides, there are, you know, there, there are young men that are put into situations with no choices. And, um, God, maybe we should resurrect that play. It was, it was really good. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, and, um, oh my God, I've just got to have a slip of my tea. I'm so thirsty. Um, hello again. Morning, Tori. Morning, Dawny. It's a very cruel situation for, for everyone involved. Absolutely. Um, Natasha Milchin, we left Russia because of the war. Of course, we knew about the conflict, but had nowhere else that would welcome us. No security room in our apartment or a building. Oh, sweet. That's what I mean. You just turn your eyes around the world. Just so much suffering. So much suffering. And it, it, we can just get so overwhelmed with it, can't we? Um, yeah. As I say, I'm going to chat with my dad today. My dad's a very peaceful man and a very, very well-informed, very intelligent. And I'm sure he'll have some 
some really good insight to share with Mark and I that we can then share with you tomorrow. So, moving on, and it's so weird being this way round. <laughs> it's like, I feel so alone. Um, right, guys, uh, Let's let's do something a uh, let's let's do something a bit lighter, and then we will move on to um, Jimmy Savile. Um, Big Brother, what did you think? Did you watch it? First of all, just say yes or no. Did you watch it? Big Brother, Big Brother, Big Brother, and um, I just and what was your very first thought right at the very beginning? I just want to know. I just wondered. Whether it was the same as Mark and I. Your very first thing, what did you say about it? Thank you, everybody. Thank you for sending love to my dad. Yeah. Uh, very strange for him, it must be. Yeah. Yeah. So close to all his family. And, of course, they're going out there soon, my parents, and I'm just so worried about it. Um, right. Too much editing. Um, now, you see, this is interesting. A lot of people are saying that, but... Uh, Reese as well. The music brought me back, but too much editing. Um, mm, mm, mm. So, a lot of that. Okay, nobody has said the thing that Mark and I were screaming about. I'm just going to throw this out there. Voice over. What did you think? What did you think? Oh, I didn't like the voice over. I'm sorry. I'm going to give him a chance. But for me, it was... They said, I'm just talking about the first minute. That iconic voice. Um... Yeah, voiceover guy, Laura Lou, was not right. It was thin. It didn't sound, sorry to say it, it just, it didn't sound like a professional voice. Sorry. But I'm just wondering if that's just the first episode. So the first problem for me was the voice. You know me, guys, I'm a huge Davina fan. I thought the presenters were lovely, but I love Davina. <laughs> and I miss Davina. Um, now, lots of you saying that you didn't like the, um, the editing. It's weird. I'm always a bit impatient with first shows because I find that this, and in, actually often I haven't watched, I don't watch the first shows of big reality shows because I think there's too much faffing about. And, um, I quite liked the way people got on and were ushered in. I liked that because... What do you get when you're being interviewed out on, you know, with all the with all the cameras there? And you usually get people just trying to be like their best selves. And um, I like it because as soon as they're through that front door, you really do get to know them. Wow, lots of opinions on Big Brother. So loads of you watched it. Um, too heavily produced says Russ. Okay. Now, listen, apparently, a producer friend of mine said, I don't know if this is true, that they are going to be doing the 24 hours live streaming, which I am so excited about. And which I, if, if only they had had that when I was in Big Brother, it would have been, oh my God, it would have meant the world because you would have seen all what was going on instead of an unbelievably edited version. Because, <laughs> like, when they were in the bathroom, even last night, I was saying to, I was saying to Maddie, oh, my God, my first night in the Big Brother house in the bathroom, Perez, I was laughing so much, I wet myself when he was doing this whole show and he was doing it, because I've never watched a minute when I was in it. And she went, oh, no, they didn't show any of that. <laughs> she said, they never showed him, you, anybody, like, you laughing. <laughs> What's... What, never? You, yeah, no, you were never shown laughing. You were always... <laughs> I was always pissed off and miserable. So it would have... I would have loved it if it had been live-streamed when I was on. Because you also would have seen so many 
cheating things that went on. <laughs> um, but um, thank you, Edward. Um, so let's get down to it. Contestants. Who's your favourite so far? I do not... Right, OK, I'm going to put myself right out there straight away. I do not want the public to make that huge mistake of letting Olivia, the last girl that went in, to be, to be evicted. And it was so funny because last night, as we were watching it, because I know the way these things work, and um, she was going to be... If she was up for being evicted on Friday, I straight away said to the room, I'm telling you now, this will be manipulated so that she's not up for eviction on Friday because she is an agitator. It looks like that she's a real madam. You know, where's what got really cross about the wine, got really cross that she was voted. They ain't going to want her to leave. And then lo and behold, 10 minutes later, she's in the Big Brother room and they've said, would you like to find a way to not um, be evicted on Friday? I'm like, there you go. <laughs> but before that, I was like, please do not um, vote her out, folks, because people vote out people that they don't like, right? Um, but actually, often the people that you don't like are the people that, that create the most uh, drama and... Um, I mean, for the amount of people that were hating me when I was in Big Brother, I should have been out in week two. But somehow, I managed to be there practically the whole time. Mmm. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> what do you think happened? <laughs> um, uh, Dawny... Uh, 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 no, so what was it say? So what did we think of Olivia, the Glaswegian? I love Frida and Kerry. Which one was Frida and Kerry? Oh my God, just a moment to comment on Noki. The 26-year-old banker from Derby, former Miss Great Britain. Oh my God. She was so perfect. She was like a Barbie doll. She was exquisite. Um, um, I liked the two Welsh people. I loved it when they were being very, they were being very kind to each other in the kitchen. <laughs> the first guy in, Jenkin. Oh my God. <laughs> um, he's going to be, I think, I think we're going to go through the whole gamut of emotions with him, let me put it that way. Because we saw about 10 of his personality traits yesterday. Um, yeah. Um, loved Jenkins, says Faith Goodman. Uh, Noki got on well with Zach. Oh, I think, oh, yeah, so, oh, what, did you, did you notice a frisson? A frisson between them. Mmm. And I loved the, um, oh God, what was her name? Um, Farida, yeah, the 50-year-old, the, the Asian woman who arrived in her beautiful sari. It was interesting. She was just so, she was so lovely, wasn't she? Just doing auntie, proper auntie, like Birm, very Birmingham, very auntie, very wanting to make everybody feel nice. She was talking so beautifully to um, the last girl that came in. Let me just get her name again. What was her name? Olivia. And then Olivia went into this like, ta, 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 really nasty stuff <laughs> about, um, uh, what's his name? Jenkin. And her face, <laughs> she was like, oh my God, I'm in showbiz world. <laughs> She couldn't believe anyone could just suddenly be so nasty. Oh, my God. I tell you who I'm fascinated by, and I wanted to know whether you were. Yinran. Oh, my God. The Chinese girl, Yinran. I love her because she just runs this stream of consciousness out loud, doesn't she? Like, oh, what have I done? What have I done? That was, uh, I, I used to be so like that, would just 
talk to myself. Do you know what? You know how people always say, if you talk to yourself, you're, um, you're mad. Well, actually, it stops you from being mad. That's what I believe. I really do. I believe it stops you being mad because if you keep all that inside. Um, Lee, I love the older housemates. housemates. I think Henry will be funny. Oh, absolutely. Henry and who are they? Two of them that bonded. Henry and who is the other chap that's actually from Scunthorpe but watched Downton Abbey and loved it so much that he affected the accent? 25-year-old lawyer from Scunthorpe. Yes, that was it. I was quite disillusioned with life, so I suppose boredom made me apply to some extent. I love him. Um, absolutely love him. Um, and who else did I love? Um, oh, I tell you who the girls really love. Maddie. Maddie really loved. She said, oh, I love his energy. Oh, I didn't realise he was a doctor. Matty. From Isle of Man. Uh, part of the big experience of doing everything before I die. Oh, I love him. I didn't realise he was a doctor. Oh, he was so jolly. He just had such a good energy. He was the one, as he went in, I thought, I worry about you because you're really nice. And I don't know what could happen. You know, the fragile ones, you think, oh, I think you're going to be all right. Uh, no, I know, Lee. That, I know it's a fake accent, that, but, he, but he said that. He said, I have been, I watched Downton Abbey and I just practised the accent. That's what I love about him. Instagram versus reality. Um, yeah, so, Big Brother, will you be watching? Are you going to follow through for the series? Is it on every night? God, I'm a bit worried. I've got married at first sight. I've got like, oh my God, I'm just like overwhelmed. I don't go anywhere. People ask me out to things all the time and I say no. All the time. Honestly, I could be out every night, but I just never go anywhere because I'm happiest at home watching telly and chatting to you. Um, <clears throat> yes, lots of you going to be watching. Okay, well, we shall, we won't become Big Brother bores. Don't worry, because I am very aware that for a lot of people, it's complete switch off. But we will. I know it clashes with Married at First Sight tonight. No, but also it clashes. That brings me very nicely. Thank you, Zoe. On to The Reckoning, <clears throat> which is the Jimmy Savile drama documentary tonight. These are all on at the same time. What is going on with the scheduling, guys? Because it's fine if you're recording stuff, but, but for people like us that like to review and like to do live chats with you, it is literally a nightmare. And tonight is a huge night on Married at First Sight, but we are going to have to watch it on record because we're going to have to watch the Jimmy Savile and do a live chat afterwards. So... If you're planning your telly night tonight, please do it that way round. So you can, um, if you're wanting to join the Jimmy, watch the Jimmy Savile. Who's watching the Jimmy Savile actually tonight? Sadie C, exactly. Don't know if I can stomach it, exactly. Um, oh my God, I had such a good article. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. Um... um with, um, let me just, just want to see if I can find it, because it was a really good chat with Steve Coogan, who answered actually some of the questions. This, this article answered some of the questions that, I, that I've had about this. And we did, we did a trailer reaction to it a while ago. And I said that I was uncomfortable about a number of things. First, that I was uncomfortable that I was wanting to watch it with myself, you know, wanting to watch it. Um, since then, I've really changed my mind on that, actually, because I'm not actually uncomfortable with wanting to watch it now. I'm, I'm going to go back on what I said there, because I am fascinated by human beings and what makes us human and what fucks us up and what twists and turns and I'm also fascinated by this in plain sight you know he got away with everything 
He got away, thank you, Elaine, I do, I love psychology. He got away with everything. That, I can't, I can't come to terms with that. And I think why these people that do these dreadful, dreadful things in plain sight is because human beings with decent hearts and brains can't actually believe it. I don't know if you've ever been in this situation where somebody has done something to you or said something to you and even though they've done it and said it to you, you can't actually believe it because it's so far off your radar of what is human that, and these kind, this, these kind of sociopaths, of course, know that. Narcissistic sociopaths know that. Oh, Anne Maria, one of the reasons she's, she's studying psychology is because if the people I've watched growing up, unbelievable and fascinating, yes. Do you think I'd be good, a good psychology student? I want to study it without having to do an exam. <laughs> um, I mean, I remember, and Kay, it's one of the things that I, one of the things that, draws Kay and I together, I suppose Jay's a, Kay's a journalist, is, is that we are both fascinated by people. And I remember when that first documentary came out about Jimmy Savile, we were in Marbella and we were only there for three days and we spent two nights watching the entire series of the Jimmy Savile documentary. And we thought nothing of it. And then it was only when we spoke to other people about it, they were like, oh my God, how did you do that? And it's just like, oh, God, yeah, we were just like, we were just completely zeroed in the fascination of this brain. Now, when I did the reaction, when we did the reaction to the trailer, my thing was, I want to know how the victims feel about this dramatisation. And actually, um, four of the victims, um, Susan, Karen, Sam and Darren... I don't think we have their second names, um, are begin each, because it's a drama documentary, each episode apparently starts with them and with their testimony. Um, so I, so that, 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 so I was, oh, please isn't the right word, but I was like, I was, I was, I was, I was so glad that that, and, and, and um, I was reading something from one of the producers, I wish I could find this article that I had, it's been one of those mornings, um, because there were some really good quotes in there, everything went turned, turned off when I dropped the phone, um, oh, here it is, here it is, um, you know, and they said, that it was absolutely imperative of that the, uh, you know, that some of his victims played a part in it. Um, uh, or was she Elsa Pop? She was on, she, uh, there, was, um, there was a lady from it on GMB apparently this morning. Um, I know that um, after there's, there's, the BBC have been under a lot of criticism for, being a bit kind to themselves, apparently. Um, apparently, there's no mention of the news night that was dropped. Do you remember that? Um, so we will have to see and make up our own minds, won't we? Because I know that in answer to that, the um, whoever it was at this press conference said, or, or, or threaded all the way through um, the series, there is reference to where people warned and people tried to say something and, you know, and they were ignored, it was brushed under the carpet. I cannot tell you, again, I know I've said this before, just going to have a slurp of water. Um, I know I've said this before, I cannot tell you how, um, yeah, how when somebody is a really, really big star, how incredibly difficult it is to be heard and to make complaints. There is, there is always, and, and, it, and I say this of all businesses, we've said this before, haven't we? You know, CEOs of companies, you know, it's, it's, it's not just showbiz, it's across the board, you know, the hierarchy, where there is power, there is so often cover-ups. 
And it's like Mark always says, you know, when people say, oh, there was, you know, we looked into the cover-up and there was nothing to answer. Well, that's a good cover-up, isn't it? A cover-up covers up stuff. Um, that that original series was that the, you know Kay and I watched was just totally extraordinary how he this was eventually brought to light. Um, but some of the um, comments that I've read from the people that have taken part in it are saying that one particular one was saying. I want it to be heard. I want us to learn. I want, because I suppose if you've spent, it could be, it's going to go either one of two ways, isn't it? There'll be some people definitely that, that won't want this discussed and don't want to be reminded. But for some victims, that continued validation can be, play a part in a very, very long journey of trying to get some sort of healing. Um... Oh, yeah, so here it is. It's uh, Coogan says, yeah, the involvement of survivors was part of that original conversation I had about becoming involved myself. I have to say, it's very brave. It was very brave of Steve Coogan to take this part. And as he said, there, was, there were very few actors that could have done it. And, um, yeah, he, it was a terrifying prospect to take it on. Um yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, Praga Agarwal from The Independent. It feels insidiously callous and thoughtless that an organisation that played a role in glorifying a sex offender and profiting from him, the BBC, while covering up his actions for many de decades and once again capitalising on his brand and the fascination that viewers have with monsters and true crime. What do you think of that? Hmm. I think I tend to agree with that if if we are not going to see how, you know, where they were culpable. But we have to wait and see because we have to watch it. Um, but if we're not going to see that, it's going to feel like a bit of a cover up. What do you think? What do you think? Sarah D, yeah, 100% agree. Mm. In fact, it does really make you wonder, doesn't it? <laughs> That's very succinctly and perfectly put. So how did that one walk out the office without anybody thinking about that? I mean... If this is true, and we really aren't going to see that, that is kind of shocking, isn't it? Because we've seen it all in the documentary. We know how it was played out. We know where there were the cover-ups. So there's no point. They can't hide it now. So why not really be out there? Um, Hannah Leibovich, the best true crime drama I saw was the invest investigation, which was about the investigation to the murder of Kim Wall. Never features the murder or all the crime itself, but it was still powerful. Yeah, what are the clever ways to do it? I was listening to a reviewer today on LBC, and he was a very strange reviewer, I have to say, but he was saying there's almost too much screen time to Jimmy Savile, which is interesting. I'll be looking out for that. Um... But yeah, who's going to be watching it? Yes or no? Because we are and we are going to be reviewing it afterwards. So if that affects what you're going to um, uh, record and what you're not, there you go. Um, all right, guys, I've got to go. Sorry that was such a blooming mess. Sorry I'm this way up. Sorry I dropped the phone. Sorry I didn't have any of my <laughs> articles. I suspect. I took my ADHD medication just a little bit too late today. Nadia, you need to watch and listen to Prof David Wilson. He is amazing about true crime. Prof. Oh, you've told me about him before. And then I, I never write it down, so I've written it down now. Guys, I love you. I leave you. Our hearts go out to both sides all the innocents that are caught up in the horrors over in Israel and um, the innocents, the innocents, the innocents that are caught up.
let's just keep our hearts and minds there. This isn't the time to rage and look into, you know, all the detail, but just our hearts have to be, yeah, our hearts, prayers and minds have to be with the innocents because let's face it, there is nothing else we can do. We are powerless. Um, sending you lots of love.